Welcome to GTK Cars. I'm Chris, and today I'm going to show you the all new redesigned 2022 Mercedes Benz C300, which everybody is calling the baby or the mini S Class. And so far, in my experience driving the car, seeing all the technology that's inside of it, I can pretty much say the same. Under the hood, we have a 2 liter inline 4 with Mercedes EQ boost system which is a mild hybrid system that electronically boosts the horsepower and torque and all combined you're looking at 255 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque powering this 9 speed automatic. So at the front of the car in terms of design we have this excellent looking luxurious looking grill still gives it a nice sporty feel i like that against the flat background here of the emblem the emblem still protrudes out i think that's good it gives it a very prominent look and you come around to the headlights all of the new c classes come standard with the led uh, headlights you have your running light strip right there across the top that also serves as your uh, as your blinker, your turn signals. You'll notice around the car we have all kinds of sensors. There's some on the front, around the side, you got them on the back bumper and, and just all over the car. The car has a phenomenal ability to sense and just the cameras that are on it. So many safety features, it's unbelievable. We have these beautiful 18 inch alloy rims which look fantastic with the Mercedes in them. One thing that I love that Mercedes did was change the background color on all of their emblems to the black instead of the blue that they had for so long. I think this just gives it a much more modern feel. These are the smallest rims you can get on the C-Class. You can go up uh, in size on these, but with this, you're gonna get a little bit better ride quality. So these look great and I think they work just fine. Coming around the side, all of the door handles on the car have the lock and unlock feature. So you can lock the car and unlock it no matter which door you're getting in and out of. The mirrors come standard with the blind spot alert. You get your little triangle there that'll light up when someone's in your blind spot, which I think every car should have, but even in 2022, unfortunately, they don't. The car itself, the Mercedes C-Class has been evolving over time, over the last handful of generations, and it keeps just getting a little bit bigger. This generation is roughly two inches longer uh, than its predecessor. So just giving a little bit more prominent feel on the road and offering just a little bit more space on the inside. Have our LED taillights, the back of the car, the overall design. <coughs> it's just my favorite thing about these. They really took from uh, took notes from the S class when they were designing this. I think they really perfected it. I did not like the previous generation, just last year's model, uh, how it looked, and that was mainly because of the back end. I really think they perfected it. Uh, you can see we got more sensors and everything. 
One thing, it's one of the biggest complaints you'll hear from anybody doing a review on one of these, is that your exhaust cutouts here are fake. They don't lead to anywhere. Your exhausts are actually up under the car. These are usable in higher end models like the AMG models and things like that. They will open these up and actually make those functional. At the back, the trunk is very easy to open. Just push the button. There is also a button to open the trunk on your key fob, which is a nice touch. Very spacious trunk for a car in this category. Lots of room back here. We also have these buttons right here. There's one on each side, and these will automatically pop the back seats down so you kind of have that open pass-through in case you need to carry something a little larger. We also have a very generous amount of storage underneath this piece here. It's very deep. You could really store uh, some stuff up under there. Nice touch uh, from Mercedes. You got your auto close or you can just push the lock button. That will close the trunk and then lock the car. They both will close the trunk but the lock button will then lock the car which is a nice feature especially if you're getting groceries out or something like that. Something that really surprised me and I actually just now noticed is your gas cap. Uh, the, car, the car just locked. Hold on. It locks automatically if you don't get in it. All right, right there. You actually have a cap for the gas tank. I, that is really weird to see on such a modern car, but that's what they went with. So before we get done with the exterior details, I just wanted to take note of the key fob. It is a very nice, it's got good amount of weight because you get this really nice uh, metal on the front of it. It's an absolutely gorgeous looking key fob. It is a little bulky, but I tell you what, it fits perfect in your hand. It feels good. Um, you got your trunk pop, your unlock, and then the Mercedes emblem is the lock button for the car. Now, you will notice on a high-end car like this, thinking, why doesn't it have remote start? Even $25,000 Hondas have that. That's because they didn't integrate that into the key. Instead, they integrated it into the Mercedes Me app that you can download on your phone, connect to your car. You can lock and unlock the car. You can remote start it. You can check your tire pressure, your oil pressure, send diagnostic information to the Mercedes dealer. It does so much stuff. It's actually really cool. And if you get out of your car and you leave it unlocked, uh, it won't take but a couple of minutes. You'll get a notification pop up on your phone saying you left the car unlocked and it will give you the option to lock it. The only downside to this app on your phone is that you get a one year free trial just long enough to get you hooked on using it if you're going to use it. And then after that, it's $1.99 a year, not $1.99, that's $200 a year. Now as we move to the inside of the car, we're going to start right here with the door panel, which overall is very nice, it's high-end looking. We don't have the upgraded Burmeister speakers uh, in this car, but the speakers still do look really nice. Uh, down here you just kind of have the plastic, not a big deal, it is still a C-Class. Um, you have your seat controls, they are 14-way adjustable seats, and instead of these physically moving like buttons like you've seen in cars of the past, these are actually just touch sensitive. You just touch them and the car will move. They don't physically uh, move as buttons. Um, you have your actual door handle right here, but to actually like push open the car and when or push open the door and pull the door closed, instead of having a cutout in your armrest here, like a lot of cars have, your armrest is the piece that you're going to grab onto and pull the door closed and push the door open. That's actually kind of neat. The downside to it is that this really, this is plastic right here, but it's a very nice you know chrome looking piece. It's going to show prints. Um, if it's raining outside and you get raindrops on it, gonna, so you're going to be having to clean that a lot uh, if you're particular about the neatness of your car. We also have heated seats up here and memory seats, which can save uh, three different positions for you. And down in the bottom, we have a button right there to pop open the trunk. So inside the car, first thing I'm going to point out, because it's one of my favorite new features of the car other than all of the tech that it offers and that's the new steering wheel design i think it looks absolutely phenomenal uh, taken from the s class obviously there's two different variations of it there's the amg uh, sportier looking one that has two levels on each side of it this is just the regular one but i still think it looks fantastic 
You've got all kinds of controls on it over here. You have your cruise control uh, options and you have your options to control your 12.3 inch uh, gauge cluster screen. You can go in here and you can select different uh, different views and, and things like that. If you want the sport, if you want the understated, uh, you, you have a couple of options there uh, that you can do. You can change your middle one from showing what you're listening to, to how many miles, uh, what MPG you're getting. You can just kind of scroll through the menu. There's all kinds of different options in there. A big complaint that a lot of people have had uh, in reviewing this car is how thick the steering wheel is. And I will say it is thick, but it, it does not bother me. I, I can't say I can complain about it. But my wife uh, actually drove this car earlier this morning and she has smaller hands and she couldn't get her index finger and her thumb to touch uh, with her hand around the steering wheel. So I guess for some people I can see how that would be a problem. We still have our steering column mounted gear selector. You go down for drive, up for reverse, and then you push this button for park. I love that. Um, I had a 2014 E-Class a few years back and that was one of my favorite parts about having a Mercedes, honestly, because then it frees up all of your space down here. You have a very nice storage compartment right here that splits open, which is staying traditional for Mercedes. That's how my E-Class was. Then we have this really nice area in here with your cup holders, a little bit of storage. There is a USB port in there. And all the way up in here, you can stick your phone down in here and it will wirelessly charge. And speaking of phones, see we can stick it right, stick your phone right down in there and it will charge. I've been using it. Uh, and it's been working just fine. With this car, uh, looking over to our 11.9 inch center display, which <laughs> basically is just an iPad uh, in the middle of the car controlling everything. Um, we do have wireless, um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We only have a few physical, well, they're not really even buttons. They're still just kind of touch sensitive down here um, at the bottom of your menu. You can scroll for the volume of the radio you have your mute uh, button there this right here is a fingerprint scanner so if it was set up for my profile i haven't set it up yet you can have different profiles and whoever gets in can scan their fingerprint and it'll the car will go to whatever settings that they prefer um, you have your different drive modes we have eco comfort sport and then the individual where you can kind of customize it I never really noticed a different difference for sport mode on Mercedes, at least on the base, just kind of base models. There is a sport plus mode that you can get at a higher trim package. And uh, the individual at the Mercedes dealer mentioned that with sport plus, you can start to notice a difference. The sport, you're probably not gonna notice anything too crazy. So comfort is usually where you're just gonna keep it. The center screen here uh, is very responsive. Uh, doesn't appear to be laggy or anything like that. I love, if they're not gonna put physical buttons for climate control, which is still what I prefer, they do have this fixed menu at the bottom of the screen where you can control your climates. You can go up and down in temperature. It does have dual climate control. You can control the fan speed and so forth. And then for anything that you don't see here, you can go into the uh, climate menu, I believe. Yes, right here, you can turn the system completely off. You can adjust where the airflow is, is coming through and so forth. But most of the stuff you're gonna need just while driving is right there, it's fixed. No matter what you have on the screen, that's always gonna be there. And that's an excellent touch. So a big downside to having everything controlled through a screen um, is gonna be that you're gonna get fingerprints on it. If you like to drive with the windows down on nice days and you're gonna get dust coming in here, it's gonna get dusty. Your gauge cluster up here is gonna get dusty. Might be handy to just kind of carry a little small microfiber cloth uh, with you in your center console or maybe in your door pockets where you can just kind of wipe it down real easy, easily, uh, you know, every other day, something like that, just to keep it looking nice and clean because it really is just a stunning, luxurious looking cabin in here. We have, we have our woodwork. I could not tell you specifically uh, which color they what they actually call this particularly i think there's a few different uh types that you can get the air vents are really nice looking they have a good feel to them uh not good metal feel to them uh you can go up 
and down. Everybody seems to like that click uh, that they make. Uh, you can have the middle of them kind of direct the airflow, and then to turn, shut the air off, you just turn that middle piece, and it's also got a nice click to it. So those are very nice. And at nighttime, the ambient lighting in this car, Mercedes is probably an industry leader when it comes to ambient lighting. We have lighting running all the way up through your center console here, up through the dash. We have ambient lighting actually inside each of the air vents. We have it in the door panels around your seat controls and your actual door handle and in your armrest. And we have it up here, way up here where your, where your lights up here are. We have ambient lighting that runs up here too. And there's so many different color options from fixed colors to changing colors. It's absolutely uh, really, really cool. Now, so many things about this car are just touch sensitive. Even just changing the position of your rear view or your side mirrors, um, there's not a physical button. It's just touch sensitive, just, just like your seat controls and everything else. They applied the same technology to these little lights up here. And as Tyler and I were messing around with them, they should have just used a button because it works for the most part but sometimes we were sometimes we were struggling to actually get them to go on and off um, at the mercedes dealer they were showing that you kind of swipe but the reality is you can honestly just touch as long as it senses something there i think now that we figured it out they're working a little better but there should not be a learning curve just to turn lights on in a car that's a little bit too much we do have a very uh, nice sized sunroof here and going back to our touch theme there's not a button but there is like this I almost kind of want to call it like a little landing strip is kind of what it looks like you just take your finger and you slide and the sunroof will open and then the same thing to close it you'll just run your finger back this way just in the direction you want it to move and it will close and while right now that functions perfectly fine but what about five to ten years from now when this car is used and has a hundred thousand miles on it are all these touch features going to work are these screens still going to be working like they are only time will tell that's just going to that's just the modern day car market i think eventually decade or two down the road where the used car market is going to be a completely different game um, i do really like the look of the seats there's a few different color options on them. This one's option, you know, with the with the black color. The seats are completely uh, electronically adjusted, with the exception of your back headrest, which there is a handle on the side to physically move it forward and backward. Everything else is completely electronic. And over here, we can't uh, conclude the interior portion here without mentioning the glove box, because this, for a C class for a car in this segment. It doesn't just go here, it goes all the way up in here. It's a very deep and spacious glove box. And then if this isn't enough, you actually have an upper ledge right here. This is kind of where the owner's manual and everything is uh, right up on this ledge. Fun fact about the owner's manual, if you don't want to physically look at the actual book, you can actually pull up the owner, owner's manual right here and search by category right here on your center screen, which is a little bit more convenient if you're trying to figure something out. All right, one last thing while we're on the inside of the car because this has got to be one of the best systems that I've ever seen on a car personally. And that's going to be your backup camera and just the camera system on the vehicle overall. So when we put the car in reverse, your backup camera is going to pull up here. This is literally like watching high definition television. This has got to be just the clearest looking backup camera that I have ever seen. As you turn the wheel, you will notice it will kind of change your trajectory. That's not unique to Mercedes or anything, um, but it is nice that they have it. But the clarity of it is just what really stands out to me. You do have your 360 view, and if you do start to get close to something, these blue lines will start to warp to show you something is kind of you know in your in your path. Um, we have different uh, views. We got our front camera here, which also just excellent excellent quality um, you have your all-around view you can actually take it and drag we can zoom out um, and literally see I mean if you were parked if you're trying to pull out and there's a car close to you or something I mean you can literally see everything from here and on top of that uh, it is very responsive this has got to be just 
one of the best system, it, well, no, it literally is the best system I've ever seen in a car. And welcome to the back seat of the 2022 Mercedes C-Class where we do have a few nice amenities. We have these nice little pockets in the back of the seats and they're actually really nice because they pull right out from the back and you can see straight down in there. They're very convenient. Um, that's not you necessarily unique to this year because my 2014 E-Class had ones that operated very similarly to that. Uh, you have your very nice high-end air vents that everyone likes uh, right here in the middle, plus a little uh, ledge just for putting something small if you pack a gum, whatever. And then right here in the center, you got a nice little strap to pull it down. You have an armrest, which kind of holds itself up but feels very sturdy. It, it stays in position. You have cup holders, push them twice, they pop out very unique cup holders it's definitely a less complicated system than what was on my uh, e-class that i had but it's just weird um, that you have these bottom pieces that that kind of move like that but i mean i understand just for folding it up in there why they did it and then they have these pieces here to kind of so you can fit whatever size uh drink you're putting in there nice little touch at least you have the armrest and you do have the cup holders that's very nice but the most important thing is going to be space and leg room and what you'll notice is just the shape of the seats they are shaped to give your backseat passenger just a little bit more room and that they do with this seat being in the driving position that I drive in you can see we do have plenty of room I'm about six six one somewhere right around somewhere around six foot um, and I have plenty of room back here headroom uh, is pretty decent because of the shape of the car if I was very much taller I've only got about an inch inch and a half of room uh, and I'm wearing a hat right now so that's actually making my head a little bit taller um, so if you're probably like six four or any taller uh, you might have a little bit of problem with the headroom back here we are taking a first ride in the 2022 C-Class only 121 miles on the clock and so far he thinks it's like a mini s i would beg to differ okay well first of all neither one of us has ever driven an s class to compare so it's hard to say everybody just says that and i just think that the c class it has really matured over the last couple two or three generations really it's gotten bigger it's gotten more luxurious more techy uh and more comfortable uh, because the first Mercedes I ever drove was actually a C-Class. It was back somewhere around maybe 2009, 2010. Around a tail headlights. They looked Sm really nice. Smelt amazing. It had that Crayola crown leather smell. Yeah, this mm. used German car smell. It, yeah. So good. Smell good. They looked nice. They, they kind of had gotten sporty looking uh, in that generation drove it absolutely hated it I thought the ride quality was terrible it's just not what I expected from a Mercedes but at that time the C-Class was the entry-level Mercedes that's no longer the case at least for the Mercedes lineup because you had the CLA come out in 2014 we had the A-Class a few years ago come the, out the A and B class were borrowed from Europe yes and absolutely now they cost $35,000, $40,000, and the C-Class is now at fifty. Just about fifty. Yeah. Uh, MSRP at base, we're good, is $45,550. But the reality is most dealerships that get these in, they're going to have them specced out with a few extra options, so you're pretty much going to be looking right around fifty. Right. It feels like you're sitting <laughs> in two different seats. I think the backrest with its bolstering and firmness very comfortable very relaxed very adequate the bottom half though i feel like it's a disconnect i feel like my bottom has room to wiggle and slide around because i'm not being held in i don't feel like i sink into the seats where even in your recent my, e -class my 2014 E-Class, those was, seats were so very comfortable. Yeah, um, they were. I do think these are firmer seats. They're not as comfortable um, as what I've been used to. I mean, e even in lower level, not as luxurious cars, these are pretty firm seats for a luxury car. 
but they're not bad. I do think the bottom part of the seat still is pretty soft. It's the back of the seat that I think is firmer. Um, but you're all right. I mean, there's room to slide and stuff like that, but do you need to properly be held into this seat in a 255 horsepower four-cylinder Mercedes? I would like to be. It's not an AMG. I would like to be. <laughs> you can tell from the feel of everything while being high quality it is not opulent it is not extravagant it is not overdone which i think is a big i think is is better you don't want it overdone for sure um i it's it's following the trend of modern day cars that people are seeking you don't they don't want the the over styling they want simplicity they want it basic and this car gives you that because there's not a ton of stuff on the dash. There's just some woodwork. The air vents look nice. And then everything else that you need are on these two screens, which are perfectly sized, I think, to for reading your information and for functionality. The exterior on here looks, looks lovely. It looks clean. It looks like it's been refined without throwing away the design philosophy. Right. You can see where it has progressively evolved. We're actually yeah. sitting here. Uh, it's a good time to mention the start-stop feature. Um, there is a button to disable it. You will have to disable it every time you get in the car, uh, unlike BMWs where you can turn it off and it stays off. However, with the EQ system uh, that is on the car, this start-stop function, even when you get in the car, just get in the car and start it, there have been times I'm like, did it actually start? Because I'm not sure. It's such a smooth um, action. So the start-stop feature, which it was stopped at that light, and you know it'll stop, and then it started back up. It's so yeah, it smooth. Down. You, I think you actually notice it more as a passenger because your feet are more on the floorboard instead of just on the, you know, up on the pedals. Because mm -hmm. um, I noticed it more when my wife was driving it, <clears throat> but as a driver. This is the first auto start stop function uh, feature on a car that I actually will not mind leaving on because it is so smooth. I mean, this is astonishing for a car this size with a four cylinder engine. And on top of that, it's turboed, but you don't it's not like you hear this overwhelming whine from the turbo like you hear in so many turbo cars. Um, it's smooth, it's quiet, and it gives you the power. The car should not be more expensive than this. This should be as expensive as a, as a well, practical I, car should ever be. I still have, I mean, this car is still pretty expensive, but I can't really complain about the price because I feel like you do get so much car for the price. You get so much technology, you get the safety features, you get all the cameras, the backup system, which are the best I've ever seen. This is a lot of car for $50,000. Having taken so many design elements and technology components from the larger sedans and the Mercedes-Benz lineup, the new C-Class has grown into such an elegant and comfortable vehicle. And while it still may be an entry-level luxury sedan, it certainly knows how to walk the walk. Which is why I signed the paperwork for this one last week. While my heart had originally been set on a new Civic Si, my family does already have a Civic that we love, and the C-Class was a very close second as far as cars I was considering getting. So instead of taking this one back to the car lot as we normally do after a review, this beauty gets to come home with me. Thank you for joining us today here at Get to Know Cars. I'm Chris. I'm Tyler. And until next time. Drive oh, it like actually, you stole it. Actually, drive it like you stole it, really. Be sure to check us out at gtkcars.com. Uh, most every car that we do a video review of, we also have a, at least a brief little article with some additional uh, pictures that our wonderful photographer here takes of the cars. So until yeah. next time, uh, since he'll mess it up, I'll go ahead and take this one. Uh, stay safe, have fun, and put the pedal down. <laughs>